What's going on folks, Nick down here at Mountain Man Armory. Today we're going to talk about some weapons modifications, what they mean, what they do, and then kind of go over whether those are going to be right for you or not, and maybe some reasons you want to give them a try. So we're going to start with the rifle, we'll also do a pistol as well, both of these guns are my personal firearms, I really like them a lot. We sell most of the accessories for you to get them this way. If we don't have them in stock, we can probably get them. So let's dive in, take a look at my LWRC AR-15, what I've done to it, and why. So for starters here, here is the rifle kind of at a macro. Uh, you can see it's a full length rifle, it's not an SBR or anything like that. But we'll go ahead and start down here at the stock. Uh, the stock is, well it's the one that came on it. Um, you can modify that for ease of adjustment, you know, length of pull, or if you want it to be uh, the, the way it fits you, the ergonomics, the way it fits in the pocket at your shoulder when you're shooting it, things like that. Um, that one works for me. We'll just go ahead to the sling. Sling's a good idea for a rifle, especially if you're using it for any kind of serious use, home defense, walking through the woods, whatever. Uh, it's a good way to keep retention of that rifle and also free up your hands if something comes up and it's way better than setting your gun down. So there is that. Uh, grip down here. This one's a rubber texture. Again, preference. Um, most of them that come on guns are going to be perfectly serviceable the way they are. However, you may find that you want to do something different. Uh, trigger, the trigger that's in this gun is a stock trigger. I found it to be acceptable. Uh, reasons you may want to upgrade your trigger, that's going to be kind of the same across the board. Uh, to make you shoot better, uh, I typically I'm more of a fan of smoothing out a trigger rather than lightening it. Uh, I don't necessarily need a super light trigger, but if the trigger pull is smooth, it's serviceable. You can see that I do have sights, uh, iron sights, both front sight and rear sight. Those are my backups. My primary is going to be a red dot. Some people choose scopes or LPVOs, low power, variable optics. Any of them will work uh, as long as they're a reputable manufacturer, etc. This this particular one is a Sig Sauer Romeo 5 op mod that I've been reviewing and hasn't died yet. So <laughs> there is that uh, by no means at the top end of the quality spectrum, but it's serviceable for my needs with this rifle. Again, a lot of that's based off where I'm at here in Northeast Georgia, the length of the average shot that I would have to take with this gun. Red dot's fine. If you live in more open territory, things like that, and you want some magnification, perfectly acceptable. Um, the rest of this, as you can see, the Cerakote on here, preference, um, that's all that is. That's a Rhodesian brush stroke. It was done by King of Camo over in Cumming, Georgia. Um, yeah, that was just a preference thing. Now, obviously, if you're into hunting or you want the tactical sort of camouflage, whatever, that can be done, and that's why you would do that. But for a lot of us, at least in my case with this gun, it's purely aesthetics, and I'm very happy with the way it turned out for the record. Moving forward, you can see I have this little angle foregrip, foregrip slash hand stop down here on the underside. Um, again, ergonomics. It, it, for me, it gives me a very natural, repeatable index point, which, as it happens, positions my thumb right where I need it to be in the activation pad for this light. So there is that. Moving forward, the light, this is the Streamlight uh, ProTac HLX. This one happens to be a light and laser combo. Not necessary. Um, I typically, I think this may be the only gun that I have a visible laser on. So there is that, but I do think that having a light, especially in a home defense role, I think it's a good thing. We've kind of touched on that before. Um, I'll link to a video I did on my personal channel on weapon mounted lights. The same concept applies for pistols and rifles there. It's important to know what you're shooting at and to help you make a decision if whatever you're shooting at needs to actually be shot. The spiral fluted barrel came on the gun. Um, if you chose to do that, some benefits could be weight reduction, um, aesthetics, but in this case it does make it a little bit lighter. And then a suppressor on the end. Uh, suppressor, absolutely not mandatory by any stretch of the imagination. It's a huge investment of time and money for the Form 4 process, but it does quiet the gun down substantially. And I'll roll in some footage shooting it uh, suppressed. Even on a 5.56, which is supersonic, it does make a huge difference. So for things like home defense where I may be potentially discharging the firearm indoors, uh, maintaining the 
hearing of my family members is kind of a big thing because you can't really get that back. So there is that in a nutshell. Again, this is my LWRC uh, DIIC, so direct impingement individual carbine. Been very happy with this rifle so far for what it's worth, but there is the rifle modifications. All right, let's talk handguns. Now, this is kind of an extreme example. This is my Beretta M9A3. Links down in the description if you want to check that out. I have a whole playlist over on my personal channel, The Hungry Handgunner on this gun. Uh, love it. I'm over 12,000 rounds, so you can see some of the carbon fouling and whatnot. Anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and start. Now, typically, obviously, you're not going to carry it with a suppressor, but we'll get to that. We're going to start at the back again. So we'll start down here with the grip panels. I changed those out. Not every gun uh, will allow you to change out grip panels. Some do, some have different back straps. So we'll just call it grip modification. Hugely subjective, ergonomics is my thing. Although if you do get a cool gun uh, that allows you to do the panels, shout out to Lock Grips, by the way, who sent me not only these grip panels, but also the stand I've been using. Uh, you can make some, some artistic expression along the way. So I did do that. Trigger, much like the rifle, uh, preference again a smooth trigger to me is more important than a light trigger and then when you start getting into handguns and things like that where you've got it holstered um, on your body and at some point during the day regardless of where you carry uh, but especially a pit, us appendix carry guys the guns pointed at certain bits of your anatomy that you probably don't want to negligently discharge around through again I will take a smooth yet still moderately heavy trigger over a light trigger and that's all that was done on here. This has the Langdon tactical uh, trigger job in a bag parts in it. Up top do have a red dot. Much like the rifle, it's going to be a matter of preference but we'll go ahead and we will discuss here in a bit just kind of red dots versus irons. I know a lot of old school shooters are kind of reluctant to come over to red dot sites especially on pistols but it does make a difference um, and I've kind of, uh, I'll link to some videos on my channel where I, I explored this a little bit more in detail, but uh, single point of focus, you, you stay focused on what you're shooting at instead of your sights. It, it works better for human psychology in my experience, in my opinion. And I was a slow adopter, especially to pistol dots. Come forward light, much uh, the same philosophy there as with a rifle. Just being able to see what you're shooting at, make sure that it actually needs to be shot or doesn't need to be shot. Guns can go back in holsters, bullets don't go back in guns. So there, from a moral, ethical, and legal standpoint, I think that's a good move. Um, and then the suppressor, again, not mandatory, lots of fun. Uh, home defense situation, obviously, I, I'd love to see whoever can conceal that configuration, but um, not something that you're gonna walk around out in town with or whatever, but in the confines of your own home, makes a lot of sense. And they're just plain fun, if you're willing to invest the money and the whole process of getting the tax stamp and whatnot to own one um, they really are a lot of fun i'll have a review coming on this this is the dead air ghost m um, i'll be doing a review on over on my personal channel so if you want to go over there there's a link in the description that's where i do a little bit more detailed videos on guns reviews and things like that uh, so there will be that uh, last thing, magazines. Now this one can get tricky because when you modify magazines, like this one has the Springer Precision base plate on it, uh, you can run into a situation where it's no longer reliable. Again, reliability is paramount. It, nothing else matters if the gun doesn't work as it's supposed to. So spring tension, very important with magazine feeding. It will degrade over time. Leaving your magazines, just side note, does not uh, degrade the spring if you leave it loaded or if you leave it unloaded. It's not the constant of either of those situations it's the cycling rounds through so basically using the magazines is what wears them out so leave your mags loaded in peace knowing that you're not killing the springs on these new newer mags but if you are using your mags a lot might not be a bad idea to get a backup but increasing capacity also increases the size of the gun this piece sticks out from below the bottom so if concealment is an issue uh, maybe keep the small form factor for me these are range mags gets me from 17 to 21 rounds a lot of fun and, you know, as a backup mag, it's no big deal to throw that in your pocket. And if you need extra rounds, you probably need all the extra rounds. So let's talk a little bit about red dots. So I apologize for doing this handheld. I didn't bring my tall tripod with me today, so this will be short. Red dots uh, allow you to focus on what you're shooting and the dot kind of appears as an overlay, whereas iron sights, you know, front sight focus, back sight blurry, target blurry, your mind is running that computation and calculations between the, the rear sight, the front sight, and the target, you know, super fast, but still it's multiple tasks that your brain has to keep up with. 
historically humans we have always fought and engaged things focused on what we're fighting and engaging not the implement we're using right whether that was a stick a rock a sword spear bow you focus on what you were engaging so what these red dot sites uh, do is allow you to go back to that natural way of doing it now if you're coming from shooting irons and you've shot a lot of iron sights and you probably have the same learning curve that i had um, and it takes a little while but the biggest issue is especially on pistols is finding the dot and you're kind of fishing for it dry fire presentation in your house getting that muscle memory down so you present that gun the same way each time that dot's going to be right where you want it um, give it a whirl because i was the world's biggest skeptic on pistol red dots uh, until i started working on it and now i see the advantages now if you're dyed in the wool iron sight guy i'm not saying that that's going to get you killed in the streets i'm not saying that you shouldn't do it or you can't keep using your irons but I think you owe it to yourself to give it a whirl. Now certain vision issues can come up and there are certain brands of red dots that are gonna work better for eyes than others. Uh, also keep in mind, there's one area that you do not wanna cheap out. Think about a pistol slide as you're shooting and that slide moving back and forth very quickly imparts a lot of stress to the optic. This is where you absolutely will get what you pay for. Trijicon RMR, kind of the reigning champ of durability. Uh, the Hollow Suns I've had excellent luck with, thousands of rounds. Thousands of rounds using hollow sun optics without any issues. So there is that. But if you think that you're going to go on Amazon and pick up a $30 pistol red dot, that's going to be just as good. Um, it's not. And this isn't me being a gun snob. This is just buy once, cry once. Um, and by the time you've replaced that other thing over and over and over, you could have had a nicer optic from the get go. And, and that's true with a lot of things, but especially with this, just because of the physics of what's involved. So sound off in the comments, your opinion on pistol red dots, your opinion on the accessories I've done. If there's anything you want to add or you have any differing opinions, feel free to drop them down there. I don't claim to be the be all end all. That's just my thoughts on it. And again, I've got reviews on a lot of that stuff over on my personal channel. If you want to go check that out, there'll be a link in the description. Guys, stay safe and I'll see you guys next time.